reason When love runs high In this time Give it to me easy And let me try With pleasured hands To take you in the sun To promise lands To show you everyone So I would recommend to the chamber uh, and the visitor center perhaps think about running some ads that uh, baby boomers read, retired baby boomers and on up, come to Bisbee. It's relatively safe, it's a nice climate, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very safe. Well, actually, um, that's not a worry. I've been working with Freeport for the last 18 months. Uh, I've had many meetings with Robert Quintanar, uh, who's the manager presently, uh, Joe Bruner, who's the director of discontinued operations, and Richard Barr, who's the director of governmental affairs and, and house council. Uh, the fact is that um, because of the discontinued operations, Freeport does want to lease. And the problem that we had in, in, in my dealing with them and negotiating with them is for a period of time they wanted to tie the lease into our streets program because Freeport owes us money for hurting our streets uh, during the reclamation process and the remediation process. So I have been working with Freeport and trying to come up with the figure of which works. So, Actually, uh, Freeport has done some, uh, some very interesting things. Uh, we do have a figure for the streets, uh, and separately, we have an agreement on the, uh, the, the mine itself that there will be a transition on the mine within the next two years in which it's actually going to be a shared responsibility between the city and uh, Freeport in a separate entity totally. So there's some really exciting, some interesting things that are going to be happening. So Freeport, the last thing that they want to do is to pull the plug on Bisbee. Number one, they can't handle the bad press, quite honestly. And uh, number two is uh, they're using Bisbee as a, as they indicate, a poster child. And so they want Bisbee to be able to be shown to every other location as when Freeport leaves, this is how we leave it. Well, I would definitely look at bringing solar and wind uh, as primary um, industries to town. I'd like to see them come and do job training and, and have the, the business located here. Um, so that they could both provide for Bisbee, but also um, manufacture turbines and things like that to take away um, and sell other places. But, I mean, part of it is I'd like to see the Bisbee residents being the ones that create the industry rather than other industries coming in to create those things. So I'm more into finding ways to educate the people that live here to create the workforce needed to provide the necessities going into our future. I work at the high school and I've been with the school district for about 22 years now and I've, I've covered substitute teaching, I was the librarian for many, many years and I'm now in the, uh, I'm now working with the uh, detention students. Um, I still get the academic kids that come in for testing. I help um, athletes with their academics. But uh, my focus right now is, is the uh, kids that cannot hang in a regular classroom or they're removed for one reason or another. So I and think working with- the person. 
because I'm working with many different personalities. One of the options is the retirement center that um, Mary and Maggie um, alluded to. There has been the first study that was done uh, by Copper Queen Hospital, and they did the feasibility study and did show that the, the community could support a 230-bed uh, retirement center or facility. Uh, there will be a presentation by the IBISB, the Economic Development Committee, uh, this coming Tuesday, and you'll see that action will be taken uh, on that uh, on that program of moving us forward in terms of uh, providing assisted living uh, alternatives to aging uh, uh, elder ho elder house elder housing we call it aging in place, where you be in a facility and move along as uh, your needs uh, demand. Don and I were just recently visiting my aunt in, in Denver, and she is in one of these facilities, and they have a room for visitors. And so, using uh, business terminology, we stayed at a bed and breakfast at a assisted living facility. <laughs> <laughs> certainly had breakfast with the residents there, and certainly it was a model facility in terms of what we might attract here. great hospital, and we have an even greater hospital in Santa Vista, but many of those doctors, many of them actually, some of them live here now, and many more of them, from nurses to doctors to technicians, they would live here if there was housing for them. Not everyone, like myself, wants their house to have been made in 1910 to 1940, so some people need this for their reasons. It's just like everybody doesn't buy a used car, everybody doesn't want a used house. We get a thousand retirees back into this community, how that would benefit this community in, in economic terms, especially. So, our sales tax revenue right now is a little over two million dollars a year. So, you take a 20 percent increase, we're right now we're about 5,500 people. So, a thousand people is about 20 percent. So, that obviously would increase the sales tax revenue in the vicinity of four hundred thousand dollars and. Our state shared revenues, so there's three different sources of that, it's about $1.4 million. So you take 20% of that, you can add another $300,000. So now we've increased the revenues of the city by about $700,000. What these numbers really mean is that in this next year's budget, $1.8 million is going to the uh, pay our public safety people. That's a good thing. Not one person up here has said anything about laying off firemen or police officers or firefighters or police officers. And uh, I certainly am not a proponent of that. But we do need to understand what this really means. We had some figures that uh, currently how much we pay in pension. Actually, in the next July, we're going to be going up to almost 70%. So that what that means is for every $1,000 and we're paying a police officer or a firefighter, we're paying the state $700 in pension. Now, who fixes that? We don't fix that, unfortunately. I've met with the state pension people, I've met with union reps, both, both police and fire on the state level, and it cannot be fixed by us. So we can't sit here and say, I've got a great idea, let's do that. It's a state legislature fix only. So, how does that happen? In my opinion, it's going to happen. Here's why. To really understand how did Bisbee get into this position, when Phoenix is paying 26% and we're paying 70%, okay, here's the way. We are a legacy department. Remember back, we all talk about in 1900, Bisbee had 21,000 people, right? We had that many firefighters and police officers. Now, we have those people that have lived long enough, thank God, and now retired, and we are carrying all of these people. So what we have is an upside-down pyramid. There's fewer paying for more. It's that simple. Phoenix and Tucson, they are in a great position because their, their areas are growing exponentially, <laughs> and so they have more people paying for fewer. That's, the pyramid is exactly the opposite. So what has happened now is 
Phoenix has an unfunded liability of one billion dollars for pensions. One billion. Tucson has 500 million. So what is going to happen is, when the big boys get hurt, the state legislature is going to change. It's a, it's a legislative action, which I have every reason to believe will in fact take place, because it's Phoenix and Tucson that control the legislature. It's not the leagues of cities and towns, and it certainly isn't Disney, Arizona. Yes or no, the city council has voted to put two tax increases on the ballot. A 1% increase in sales tax and a 1% increase in the bed tax. Both measures do not have sunset clauses, which means that there is a time limit for the law will be in effect. And the sales tax also does not have a trigger percentage, which is a percentage at which point the law would cease to have an effect. In other words, with the county and the state increased taxes above a certain point, the bed tax would not would no longer be collected. So there's a ceiling as to how high the tax can go. Do you support these increases as now proposed? As now proposed, I do not. Okay. And do you do you support these increases, the bed tax and the sales tax, as now proposed? No, I don't. Ron? I support both of those. Cynthia? I support one and not the other one. I, don't, I support the bed tax, I don't support the one person. General tax. David? <clears throat> yes. John? No. Doug? I support both. Mary? Not as it's written now. Peter? Uh, not as it's written now. And Serena? I support the bed tax. 